We have already learned how to use the prefixes cis and trans to describe the stereochemistry for an alkene. For example, let's look at these two stereoisomers. These are molecules that have identical connectivity, but they differ in terms of their shape around the carbon-carbon double bond. And we have learned that if we want to describe or differentiate these two isomers from each other, we can use the prefix cis or trans to describe the particular shape of each one of these isomers. To do that, we look for something on each carbon of the double bond that is identical. So for example, in this molecule, we have a hydrogen on each carbon of the double bond. That's the thing that they have that is identical. And once we have identified the identical substituent on each carbon, we compare the relative position of those two substituents with respect to the double bond. If they are on opposite sides of the double bond, like in this case, then we could say that the molecule is trans, which means opposite. And in this case over here, where the two identical substituents are on the same side of the double bond, then we call that particular molecule cis, cis, which means same. Um, and this type of notation, cis and trans, works really well a lot of the times, but there are instances where we have stereoisomers of alkenes that cannot be described using the cis and trans notation. So for example, let's take a look at these two identical connectivity, so they're stereoisomers of each other, and you can see that they are not exactly the same because in the first molecule, the two halogens are on the same side of the double bond, in the second molecule, the two halogens are on opposite sides of the double bond. We cannot assign cis or trans because there is nothing on this carbon that is also present on this carbon. We have four unique substituents on, on the two carbons of the double bond. So the cis and trans notation breaks down sometimes. And in that case, in a situation like this, we need to introduce a more comprehensive way of distinguishing these two isomers from each other. And that is the E and Z prefixes. E and Z are very similar to R and S, which you might have already assumed because of the way that they're represented, capital letters in, in parentheses. And E and Z are determined pretty much exactly the same way that we determine R and S, or at least it's very similar. So to determine E and Z, we have to prioritize the two substituents on each carbon of the double bond. This is really the only part about E and Z that's tricky. We're prioritizing the two substituents of each, on each carbon of the double bond. So that means we're going to prioritize the two substituents on each carbon, a total of four just like we do with RNS. However, we prioritize the two substituents on one carbon, and then we separately prioritize the two substituents on the other carbon of the double bond. And that's where, that's where things get a little bit tricky for students. To do the prioritization, we use the same prioritization rules as we use for R and S. So we go by atomic uh, number, and if there is a tie, we move out to the next atom in, in the carbon chain, and we just continue proceeding out until we're able to break the tie. So when we do this prioritization, because we're prioritizing a total of four things, but we're prioritizing two things and then two things, you will end up with two number ones, and you'll end up with two number twos. Each carbon of the double bond will get a number one and a number two. Once you have the substituents prioritized, you compare the relative position of your number one or high priority substituents. And if those high priority substituents are on the same side of the double bond, just like in this example right here, so if both of these were the high priority substituents on the same side of the double bond, we call that Z. So if they are on the same side, it is Z. 
And the trick that I have to help you remember that, Z, Zame, Zide. That's cheesy, but it works. So let's, let's practice this several times. Let's start by practicing up here. So first we have to prioritize the two substituents on this carbon going by their atomic numbers. This will be priority number one because bromine has a higher atomic number than carbon. And then we prioritize the two substituents on this carbon. Chlorine will be number one and hydrogen will be number two. So we have two number ones and two number twos. Draw our line through the double bond, compare the relative position of the high priority substituents. Those high priority substituents are on Z zame side, so this is the Z stereoisomer. And let's practice again, although obviously because this isn't an antiomer, this sh should be the E isomer if we do this correctly. Um, we don't have to really think that much about how to prioritize because we already did it over here. The bromine is the high priority. The chlorine is the high priority. When we look at the double bond, the high priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, and the opposite side of the double bond is the E stereochemistry. Let's continue down here with some practices. Well, this particular molecule, we can actually classify using cis or trans. Everything that can be classified using the cis and trans notation can also be classified using E and Z. But let's just practice it anyway. So if we're using cis and trans notation, we have two identical methyl groups on the same side, so this would be a cis. That might make you wanna say um, that automatically it's a Z because cis means on the same side and z means on the same side, but don't be tempted to make that assumption because it's not always the case. So looking at this carbon atom right here, there is a hydrogen on that carbon atom. If we prioritize the two substituents on this carbon, a methyl versus a hydrogen, the methyl group is going to be your high priority substituent. So that'll be your number one. And then on our second carbon, we have a methyl versus a long carbon chain. And the longer carbon chain is going to be higher priority. So even though this would be a cis molecule because of the two methyl groups, when we use the E and Z notation, the high priority groups being on opposite side of the double bond, it is an E. Let's take a look at this next example. So first, let's categorize or classify the, the substituents on the first carbon. Bromine has a higher atomic number, so it's our number one. Now we'll uh, classify or prioritize the substituents on the second carbon. Iodine has the higher atomic number, so it is our number one. Here's the line of our double bond. Our number one substituents are on opposite sides, which is E. Here's another example. We have two more examples. Here's our double bond. We have, um, first let's prioritize this carbon. The bromine is high priority. Now let's prioritize this carbon. The chlorine is high priority. We look at the position of the two number ones on opposite sides. I picked a lot of E. So we have one more example, and in this last example, not only are we going to assign the stereochemistry, but we're going to name the molecule. Um, so you'll be able to see how to fit that stereochemistry into the name. So let's start with the stereochemistry. We have, um, here's our two carbons. When we look at this carbon right here, comparing its substituents, bromine has a higher atomic number, so there's our substituent number one. Looking at this carbon, we have a carbon chain versus a hydrogen. The carbon chain is number one. The relative position of our two number ones, they're on opposite side of the double bond, so that is E stereochemistry. And that stereochemistry is gonna go at the very front of the name. And then now we're ready to name the molecule. To name the molecule, we're gonna find the longest carbon chain in the molecule that includes the double bond. We start numbering that carbon chain at the end closest to the double bond. Name the substituents in alphabetical order. So we have one bromo, one chloro, and then name the alkene, one pentene, or depending on what system you use, you might have named it dot, 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 chloro, pent, one, ene, if you prefer to have the number in the middle of the name.